Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I made this. They can run Keurig and lots more. This consists of Nissan Leaf batteries and reliable 1500 watt inverter. If you're interested, stay watching. Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to start working on my uh, solar generators slash battery pack whatever you want to call it i'm not going to be charging it from solar i'm going to be char charging it from that basically wall outlet probably that one right there focus okay there it goes anyways so mine is going to consist of six nissan leaf modules and a reliable 1500 watt 24 volt inverter they're just gonna gonna sit on the top uh the way i'm gonna make the inverter work is that i'm gonna have to wire three of these uh, uh packs in series in order to give me about 24 uh, what does it do? Like 24 and a half, 24.6, fully charged to about 4.1 per cell. So uh, three of these in series, and each one is going to be have two in parallel. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to have a bus bar. This is going to what I'm going to use for bus bar right here. Uh, that's overkill. It's a uh, 0.15 thick by like 0.6 of an inch wide. So it's pretty pretty good uh, chunk of copper. And so basically, the way it's going to go, it's going to do go one that's going to go right here. Another one is going to go all four of these right here. Another one is going to go four of these right here. And then one is going to connect these two. So basically, then uh, I'm going to be able to hook my inverter up to here, to the inverter. And then from here, also to the inverter. And uh, that, that will give me 24, 24 volts. Uh, the, what I'm going to do the, is on the bottom, I'm going to put these legs on the bottom right here. So the legs are going to go down the bottom, just rubber legs. I'll get them up... Uh, these guys so there's a promo code if you guys need it <laughs> they didn't send it to me for free or anything like i just i just got them they're not nice rubber feet but they're gonna go on the bottom right here uh i got this uh from lowe's this is basically the old thread it's gonna go through here through these holes mountain holes right there move this out of the way but anyways they're gonna go through here down to the rubber feet in there mount to the rubber feet and then I'm going to find the way to mount the inverter from here also to there. Another thing you're going to see here, what do I got? I got, I got this rope right here. So I'm going to try to make handles from this rope so I can carry this thing around. Make it look as nice as I can. But uh, yeah, that that's what it is. The Nissan Leaf modules, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this module. So each module has uh, four, four pouches. Now, two of them are in series, two of them are in parallel. So basically... This would be one set, so about you know 3.7, whatever the Nissan calls it, for nominal. This would be 3.7, and uh, from here to here you have 7.6. So uh, this is uh, what I'm looking at, fully charged. If, if you charge each cell to 4.2 volts, we're gonna have 8.4. Yeah, 8.4. Can do the math, but uh, yeah. So uh, all of these. Put together i'm going to charge them to 4.1 and i'm going to top max voltage is going to be 24.6 yeah 24.6 if you charge each one to 4.1 so put put together three modules in series and uh whenever they discharge all the way down to three volts or so and it's about max i want to discharge the total voltage will be 18. reliable inverter the shutdown voltage about 19.5 it says on their website but we're all going to test it once it's all put together and see when it shuts off and uh, how much voltage we're still going to have on to on the batteries left but to get started i think what i'm going to do i'm going to start cutting this whole thread start cutting it putting it through and bolting these modules together and uh putting the legs on and i'll start working on the bus bar from there on so i'll get to work and I'll give you an update here in a little bit. All right, give you a quick update. This is the method I ended up using. So uh, on the rubber feet goes on there. It has a little metal insert, which is a little too small for the rod to go through. By the way, I forgot to say this is a quarter inch uh, by 20, just a whole thread lows. I'll put all the links in the description so you kind of know where I got this stuff or whatever there. Uh, so it'll be all down below there. But anyways, uh, so rubber foot, this comes out, goes on there. Uh, one nut inside holds it in. Then I got a one and a quarter. Right here, 
one and a quarter inch uh, washer because this is one and a quarter inch rubber leg that goes on there then uh i got another nut i could have put it flush like this but uh i, I don't want to it's just a rubber in there and uh i didn't want to be tighten it that much with the just onto the rubber because there, once you take out that insert there is no metal so uh, i want it to be all the load that goes on the nut right there not on the rubber piece anyway so that goes on here that goes on there then i had a nut and then i just got another washer then it just uh, goes all the way to this washer right here and another nut so and then i just tighten them up so same technique went for this one into there and i just kind of cut them a little extra because i don't know what i'm gonna do as far as the mount and inverter yet so uh, just to worry about this yet and then uh, we'll do the inverter later but uh the inverter is gonna mount to here and then the handles are gonna mount to here so i'm just gonna give myself a little extra and whatever i don't need i'm just gonna cut it off so uh, i got two more to do i'm gonna do this one and i'm gonna do the other one and uh we'll start on the bus bars all right another update here legs are done they ended up being pretty good i think they look pretty good let me see show you i said the, the reason i put a nut there and not just flush up against it i wanted to whenever i grab it when i put my handles on and grab it i didn't want it to be pulling on it's just this rubber piece because there's no metal reinforcement or anything and i think eventually it would have wore out so this way we're just pulling by this nut and this washer and uh the leg it just does uh whenever it sits on it it just pushes down and, and uh, there's nothing else so uh i think this is a little better as far as durability is gonna go and i'll turn down there's another one for you those ones i think they look pretty decent i think it's gonna look pretty cool and uh another thing i started to do is do the first piece of the bus bar so uh i'll do it real quick so basically i just measure this and then uh I measure how far how far apart they, they were and then uh, how far in the holes were made some marks drilled the cut it off you know drill the holes and uh just use the file to kind of uh make it look a little better so i've got a bunch more to do i'm gonna make the same one for here and then i'm gonna make one for two for four I guess this one and the right here and uh, also I should be able to connect like these two these two and these two just so uh, they stay more balanced but uh, I might not use this or might might use this I don't know we'll see how it goes I'm just gonna keep keep doing the, the main ones and then uh, I'll see what I want to do as far as the balance ones go if I want to connect them up or whatnot uh, I'll give you another update when I'm done with that all right bus bars are on perfect so uh i was gonna test the voltage so you guys are with me right here uh one thing i didn't mention but it's a uh, you have to do this uh, all these cells all these uh, modules they have to be the same voltage when you put them together when you do it in, especially when you put them in parallel that would be a disaster if one was charged another one wasn't you hook up a bus bar like this it will one will try to charge discharge into the empty cells as fast as possible so you can actually ruin both of these uh both of these cells or modules or whatever you want to call them so uh this is the negative of the whole battery and this is the positive of the whole battery the reason i put the positive down there to go to the inverter because uh maybe i'll put a fuse maybe down the road or something right here before it gets into the inverter and uh, I would like to have a fuse on the positive side, obviously. But uh, yeah, I was going to show you the voltage. So this is positive of the whole pack. This is negative of the whole pack. Oh, yeah, I got to go a little over voltage. So the whole battery voltage right now is 20.2. That's because all of my modules are pretty much discharged all the way. Let me show you. I can go back down. So the whole module volt voltage is... Uh, 6.74 and uh right here you can go and you can see 3.37 that's per per cell basically so 3.37 3.37 so they they're identical and all of these would be 3.37 36 i mean it's reversed let me go this way 3.37 
3.37 you get an idea so all these were the same i connected them all together and now my whole pack voltage I did it again here we go the whole pack voltage is uh 20.2 so pretty much all did pretty much discharged but uh yeah i i would pr prefer to work with the modules with the cells that are you know close to be discharge just in case you short something out or something like that probably a good idea to wear gloves and uh you got to be really careful putting these buzz bars on so you don't shorten in between here or there just yeah you got to be really careful and double check triple check which way you connect them so you don't have a dead shirt because that would that would be a bad deal fire everything so anyways uh yeah what next step uh, would be the install the inverter my inverter come in today it's coming in tomorrow so uh i'm gonna put this on hold today i'm gonna clean everything up and uh we'll restart tomorrow get the inverter hooked up negative is gonna go right here like i said positive from my inverter is gonna come down and go into into right here and uh also i want to connect like uh, these together so like these two these two and these two uh just uh so they're always equalized so maybe i'll do that now and uh I'll give you a quick update or probably see you tomorrow. I'm not going to show you these, but just basically two screws. Oh, forgot to tell you this. These ones are M6s and these ones are M4s. If you go buy these at the store, I didn't have, like, I had to go buy them. So M6s for here, M M4s, M4s right here. And, uh, yeah, I got some M4s and I'm just going to connect those two together. You'll see, see them tomorrow whenever I'm putting an inverter on. All right, later. All right, everyone. I uh, got my inverter. Uh, it kind of just come in a little bit ago, so I got it plugged in. They got uh, they give you the super chintzy freaking wires, so I'm gonna definitely replace these wires, even though I'm just going so short. Actually, let me show you how I wired it in real quick. So this is the negative, this is the positive of the whole pack. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So I'm getting it up. Your positive negative. I charged it up just a little bit to bring the voltage up. So 21.1, uh, 120 volts output, 121 on this cheap Chinese meter. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I was going to test it to make sure it works. I got the, my missus's <laughs> air dryer. <laughs> this, this thing uses 1500 watts. So this is basically going to top out the, this inverter here. Actually, let me grab my clamp meter. I'll be right back. All right, grab my clamp meter. Let's see if we can see anything. Any draw? Two. This way. I don't know. I have it on AC. Let me go back to DC. There we go. Zero that out. DC, DC, DC. There we go. And the other way. All right, so about 0.6 of an amp. Idle, it's on. Let me plug the fan in. All right. I'm just gonna go on low. All right, that's just a fan. I'm doing good. We're on six amps from the pack, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna go on high. Looking pretty good still. Going 12 amps. Now warm. Voltage drops. 104. 20.6 on inverter. Going 40 amps. Now we're going to high. That sound is a voltage drop below 20 and a half. Voltage from the MEC side dropped significantly also. Around 62 amps. Oh. Okay. That AC voltage dropped quite a bit. I'm gonna run it like this for a little while. We'll see where it shuts off. But uh, I'm gonna shut you guys down so you don't have to listen to this noise. 
All right, so it's shut down at 19.9 volts uh, and the com inverter completely shut off with these uh, load on here. Uh, these things are 1875 watts, supposedly they draw, but uh, 62 amp from what I saw from the clamp meter was only like 12, 1300 watts. So uh, obviously it draws a little less than that, but the voltage was dropping off significantly. Uh, and the noise it starts making is so annoying at 20.5 volts it starts dipping down below that the noise start that it's making it's pretty crazy so i want to do two things actually i want to do three things i'm going to get rid of this cable so uh the voltage drop will be a lot lower going from the inverter to the battery so i'm going to reuse a thicker cable that's going to help help increase the shutdown voltage because this is what it recovered to as soon as it shut down so the voltage drop on the cable is pretty big this is batteries should don't sag too much once you put the load on them they shouldn't anyways there so thicker cable will mean the lower voltage even at 20.7 it's still 3.45 volts per cell uh which is for nissan leaf batteries is pretty good it's pretty much at the end of their voltage and they, they can discharge down to two and a half but uh, after about 3.6 volts, they start significantly drop off. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, so a couple things. I'm going to get rid of the speaker that's inside there. Uh, also, there is a little pod, I guess, inside these. We're going to take it apart and see that you can turn up. So I'm going to increase the output voltage to about uh, uh, 125 or so. So that, that will give me a little, a little more output voltage that way. And... Uh, the way I'm going to mount this thing, I'm, the way I was looking at, I still have some of this old thread left. I won't have enough, but I'm going to go get a little more. So I'm just going to go through these holes right here. Focus. There it goes. So I'm going to go through these holes, and I'm going to put, you know, cut it off, put a washer right here with a nut. And on the bottom, I'm also going to put the, the nut, and I'm going to you know, see if I can find like an aluminum bar, maybe like one inch wide aluminum bar. It'll go underneath this side, over to this side, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to run four of these, and then I'll probably run a handle off of these. Not off of these, but probably off of these would be a lot easier for me to run a handle. So I'm going to go pick that up real quick, and uh, probably get stuff to redo these cables, because this is a joke. Anyways, I'll be back, and we'll continue on this project. I just replaced this wire. I went in with a six gauge wire, crimped it up to length. So let me show you comparison. You find it? There we go. So this is the old wire. If I can show you better. Focus. So new wire is six gauge. The old wire, I'm assuming either eight or ten gauge. One of the two. So it's quite a bit thicker and it's a lot shorter. So that alone should eliminate a lot of a drop that we have. So I'm gonna do a little test. I'm gonna plug uh, this back in. Remember, uh, the inverter already shut off with the, with the old cables. So uh, I wanna see how much that this prolonged uh, us running this uh, fan or hair dirt dryer, whatever you want to call it. So already 0.3 of a volt higher. I'll let it run for a little bit and we'll see how much longer it'll run. So this is how much more usable this battery will be just by adding the thicker cable on the input side. Twenty point four, so uh, another point three of a volt that we we won from there, and I'll do some math and see what to this ends up being per cell. But uh, I'm gonna keep keep building it. I'm gonna keep going, adding the the all thread bars. So I got uh, went to the store. There, my lighter. Getting the wires down there, but uh, got this. This is just aluminum. Here's a what it is called in Lowe's. So with focus, the lightning is, lightning is terrible out here. Okay, 
so this is the what I got just a trim chain it's just aluminum but it's gonna go on the bottom and then I'll like that and all thread will go through it to the top through this hole focus there it goes anyways all thread from here to this hole from here there'll be another piece of that over here same thing on the other side and this is what's gonna keep inverter in place I can also cut these ones off all these off the excess and I think I'm gonna put red Loctite on these so they don't come undone down the road same thing on the other side on the legs red Loctite and uh, get this fixated into place and uh, I'll show you when it's done all right just uh, let me get it to focus there we go it's more or less uh, finished up with these uh, so I ended up uh, mounting the inverter just like I was telling you using this old threads it goes down to the little aluminum uh, angle or whatever you want to call it there but uh yeah that goes down i got these off of lows for like i don't know like four or five bucks six bucks maybe something like that i uh, had to get a little extra all thread i didn't have enough so uh all thread all there same on the bottom legs you already saw the legs Oop, get my hands out of the way uh also i used the uh, to mount uh, the ropes that i got this is my handles Gotta pick it up this way. All right, so they go underneath this washers and I put a uh, bunch of Gorilla Glue around them and uh, use the lighter to kind of uh, get the ends melted together. I don't know if you can see them. They're kind of tucked underneath there, so it looks nice. But yeah, around here, I have a bunch of Gorilla Glue, so it makes it this part hard. And then I tighten the heck out of it all the way to the bottom so it doesn't really go anywhere and this is sturdy i would never worry about it coming out same thing i'll have about an inch of rope in there all right let me turn this thing around it weighs like 40 or 50 pounds i swear i haven't weighed it but it's it's a little heavy all right this is what we got on the back i'm gonna do another overview so this is the negative two of these modules connected together and parallel also on the positive side they're connected in parallel these two modules in parallel these two modules are in parallel <laughs> as you can see i did not finish my jumper wires i, I will i just i just haven't and another thing i want to do i want to grab uh, one of those electrical sleevings that are cut on one side to kind of go over the wire i think i'm going to pick up some of that stuff and go cover these ones up and then i should be able to fit the zip tie behind there and kind of zip tie it into place just in case it's ever slid up against something metal it wouldn't short this out because that would be a disaster so yeah i definitely want to cover these up and cover these up connect these two together these two together and these two together just so they stay equalized and uh, cover that up cover this up and uh, maybe add a breaker on the positive side so maybe i'll i'll have a breaker over here or something just dc breaker we'll see anyways uh moving on to this side and right? pretty much the same as the other side just don't thread down and uh that's it also the same thing for the wires i couldn't use the big washers on this side because otherwise it was hitting over here and then the inverted wouldn't fit but the smaller washers are on there and you can see a bunch of gorilla glue it's hard now so it's not going anywhere all right let's do some testing make sure this thing works i've been charging this battery so it's charged up to 4.05 volts on each cell i was going to show you the total voltage see if i can do this hold my phone and both of my there we go perfect let's see i put it up just a little bit there we go I don't know if you can see it, but hopefully you can. So the whole pack loadage is 42.2 right now. 24.2. Again, I guess it's 24.2. Okay. All right. And then let's see and show you the, which the voltages of each cell. 4 4.04. 4.04. 4.04. 4.04. Flip this around. 404. 404. Perfect. 404. 404. Perfect. 404. So 
all of these cells are 404. That's how balanced the stage is charging in. So hopefully this is going to keep staying balanced like this. So you don't have to worry about BMSs, bouncing, all this electronic stuff that it can go wrong. Try to keep it as simple as possible. So this, since these batteries come out of the same car, they're just the same mileage on them, same year, same everything. Hopefully they'll stay balanced pretty good, especially if I connect the, the ones that are parallel together. That's going to make it even harder for it to go out of balance. So... I'll give you an update down the road, hopefully, if I'm using this thing and see how, how it is going. But we are going to do some testing. I'm going to hook it up to some electronics around the house. And uh, maybe we'll turn up the voltage like I was talking earlier. So we'll see. Let's get going. All right, this is the first test I'm going to do. Well, actually, I already tested it with a, a hair blower, my missus's hair blower. Uh, it's time to test over her Keurig, so if this goes wrong, she's going to be mad if it does go bad. Anyways, I haven't tested it by myself, so this is the first time trying a Keurig. Keurig supposedly draws 1500 watts. This thing supposedly can put out 1500 watts, so uh, let's make a cup of coffee. Alright. There's 120 volts. 24 volts on the battery. Turn that on. All right. So it fills it up and now the heating element is gonna kick in. Okay, that's a heating element, 112. Uh, that's not a bad sag. The 0.5 volts on the battery, and about seven volts on the AC side. I said about 1500 watts this thing draws. No fans kicked in. Everything feels cool. The bus bars are cool. Reliable is cold. All the batteries are cold. Let me grab my clamp meter, see what I'm showing up boys. Ah, I couldn't get my clamp meter to fit, it fit anywhere. That's a freaking huge clamp meter. I shouldn't have got one this big, but it was on sale. It was like, oh, 1,000 amps, sick, but nope. That doesn't fit anywhere. I tried. Anyways, let's uh, finish making this cup of coffee. Hard time with this camera to be focused on things. There it goes. It just wants to focus on whatever it wants to focus on. Alright, making coffee on a battery power. So, if ever no power, still got all Keurig. Perfect. Focus. There you go. All right, next test is a microwave. I had a modified sign inverter before, and the microwave would sound terrible. This is 1350 watt microwave. 1500, well, I guess it's still 1500 watt inverter. So uh, let's try it, put it in for like a minute. The startup was a little rough. It's gone pretty good. Let me try it again. So we just started. Okay. Yeah, startup sounds a little weird. A little funky, but it is working. 
pretty good sag on the battery. 23.3, 23.4. going for a minute. Reliable, still cold. I wonder if fans ever could get on this thing. That's cool. It's quiet. Perfect. Call that a success. Another test. I got this Black & Decker 7 amp half inch drill. So I did a pretty good test on it. Not bad. I don't think it will run like a bigger power tools, but this is the highest amp tool that I have that's not battery powered. So, uh, hey, it runs it. Call that a pass. All right, I'm inside the inverter. Everything is pretty tidy in here, but the reason I'm in here is to turn up the voltage just a little bit just to see if I can get rid of the starter and the stuttering when the microwave turns on and stuff like that. Uh, I want it to be nice and smooth. So showing about 121 volts on this meter, 121 volts on this meter. And then uh, there is only one trim pod. That's the one that uh, changes the voltage and uh, I had a bunch of hot glue on it so people wouldn't mess with it, but I took the hot glue off and uh, we're gonna change it. So I'll let you watch and I'm gonna turn it in. You know, like a regular pot, right to increase, left to decrease. So, no, oh, opposite, right is, is decreasing it, so I'm gonna loosen it now. 120, one. This one's showing 122.5, so 122. Go to about 120. I'm doing 24 and a half, see what that does. And plug, plug the microwave back in. And uh, I'm gonna start it and see if it'll get rid of that stuttering. <laughs> I believe it's a little better. I'll bump it up just a touch more. The one twenty five is good. There we go. 125.1. It's a little bit of rough stuff on the start of the microwave. If you guys know, let me know what's what's going on with it. Is it just not getting enough power to first get going? Because I don't see instant voltage dip and then level. Like it's not really dipping until it's started and working normal. But that's what it does. All right, well, but at least it's working good, 111 volts right there. That's 1350 microwave. All right, and we'll do the go with the fridge. That fridge right there is old. Nope. The compressor does not want to kick in. Definitely not big enough to run the fridge. Yes, yeah, I'm sure that's not good on the inverter, but it does not want to run the compressor. Uh, I figured it wasn't going to do it because, I mean, the fridge it draws a lot when it first starts. So, uh, yeah, that's 
that's what it is. It didn't, it didn't. It does not want to kick the compressor on. Compressor try to start and just not getting enough power, and uh, then it kicks out. I'm assuming the same thing with microwave. It's just trying to draw a lot of power, but I mean, eventually it gets going when it first gets going. Probably over 1500 watts. So the inverter kind of. It doesn't shut down. That's what's the weird about it. it. Doesn't just go into a protection like it should. It makes this crazy noise. So I don't think that's good for it. But I mean, it does start up my microwave which is good. So it is what it is. I'm going to put it back together. All right, before I close it up, I wanted to show you something. I ended up taking the speaker out. It was soldiered into right here, into this board right there like that. So I desoldered it because I do not want this thing to be making noises before it dies. But we're going to use this uh, battery camping. And if it dies in the middle of the night, just shuts off, whatever. That's cool because we're probably going to run AC until it does die and it, it's good by the morning. I do not want to hear, listen to this thing going off before it dies for the whole volt or whatever it is. So uh, that's out. It's not going to make noise anymore. It's just going to die and shut off at 19.9 volts that we determined. That will keep my battery pack nice and safe and uh, it will not drain it all the way down. And uh, in the morning, I'll just shut it off. And also, I put it back to 120 volts because it didn't really make, make much changes cranking it up to 125, so I don't really need it that high. So I'll put it back to 120 where it was, put hot glue back over it. Where am I? My finger, my fingers right there, back, back over that. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put the cover back on. I'll be right back. All right, well, it's buttoned back up. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the project, about the pricing of this, uh, some of the stuff maybe I've done, would, done, would have done different, and uh, maybe some future updates for this. But uh, I think I'm done for, for this one. Anyways, uh, as far as the price goes, uh, let's jump right to it there. Inverter was 130. Uh, six Nissan Leaf modules was 375. And all this is shipped, so 130 shipped. 175 shipped uh all thread uh, i think it was like for every all, all thread let's say 10 bucks uh the handles a couple bucks for the rope i got that at uh, home depot oh, it's pretty good rope it's strong i like it and uh, the legs were like eight bucks of ebay the all the little washers and nuts another five bucks from ace hardware and I'll try to put as many links in the description as I can for where I got the stuff or whatever there. So, I mean, if you decide to kind of build something similar to this, you can. Originally, when I bought this inverter on their website or an eBay listing, the size that they list, I mean, they, there's like different sizes for all these things everywhere you look. But the size that they listed, I think, was for the, the actual inverter size. They did not include these legs. So I didn't really anticipate it hanging over this much. That's why I had to improvise with the old thread and go down and get this channel down there to get it mounted. But it, it worked out. And I think it's it's going to be fairly doable on the back side. Let me flip it around real quick. On the back side, like I was saying, I'm going to cover this up in the future. And at a breaker i want to be able to shut it off and break it so adm breaker that's what they saw inside for the fuses they're about they're like 420 amps in the all connected in parallel right yeah 420s yeah so that's 80 amps so i'm gonna get adm breaker right here so i can shut it off turn it back on it'd be it'd be pretty good uh cover up this bus bars i think i think i said that before and uh, connect these things. I think I've said that like a million times. I said I would do it, but I will do it. Anyway, so uh, that's it. Uh, inverter itself, it's okay. I mean, it is uh, it is what you pay for. I think it's a fairly decent price for what you get. I mean, it sags in voltage. It didn't protect itself for whatever reason whenever fridge couldn't start, so that's not good. I think when it makes a noise, clicking noise, I think it's overloading, and I think it should be able to shut down, but it doesn't. Yeah, but uh, it does do what it says it does. It runs 1500 watts. We tested it by running a Keurig. Uh, they also tested it by running Mrs. hair dryer. 
I'm sure those two things she's not happy me doing, but what she doesn't know she's not here. So Keurig hair dry hair dry actually said on a list like on a specs it's 1850 watts, but I don't think it draws that much. It it really does run it. Uh, it ran the microwave. Microwave is 1350, and it ran my 6M drill, which is uh, draws a lot when you first hit it. Uh, I don't expect this to do everything, but it does do bare minimum. I'm gonna run the camper with it. That's what we built it for. So uh, basically, whenever we book boondocking, I'm gonna plug in into this, and uh, we'll be able to run lights, uh, microwave if we need to, and uh, also we're putting in a like little 5,000 BTU AC, which is, has about 440 watt draw, and I'm gonna test it when it gets here. AC is on the way. So just a little window unit we're going to put in a camper and uh, just in a bedroom and enough to just kind of cool our bedroom and, uh, you know, kind of cool as much as it can throughout the night till the battery dies and the next day we move on and go somewhere with hookups to recharge it and whatever. I don't have solar for this yet. So uh, that'll be perfect. That's the reason I took out the little speaker because if we're just running it till it dead on the middle of the night, I just wanted to shut off and don't wake me up. Don't make the beeping noise. So I'll have to run over and shut it off or whatever. So that's gone. That's it. Uh, I hope you guys like it. Uh, subscribe, please. I, I'm going to make more updates on this. So uh, if you wanted to see some updates and stuff. So definitely subscribe. I'll try to put out a little more videos that I have been. And uh, try to do all kinds of projects. Hopefully you guys like them, whatever. But uh, yeah, anyways, uh, appreciate you watching. Have a good rest of your day.